Welcome back, space people. This is StarTech 47. And, um, yeah, I have a really interesting subject today that I want to talk about. Uh, mostly because uh, a few months ago I decided I needed to start getting back to some of the things that used to really interest me. Things that, that I was uh, had a big interest in and uh, I really enjoyed. Sometimes when, uh, you know, your life kind of goes south, you, you need to kind of touch back on the things that uh, used to make you happy, the things that you you would do that would uh, help you get by. And you know, decades can go by and you get away from those things. And that's uh, that's unfortunate, it's sad, it really does kind of disconnect you from a lot of what you really used to be about yourself. So, uh, yeah, after my uh, my breakup, it, uh, it was pretty rough, you know, it was, a, it was a hard time for me. So, you know, and I, I know the, the problems that you can get uh, when depression starts setting in or, uh, you know, you, you just can't stop thinking about things and it, it, it's an impossible circumstance. So, that's when I decided I needed to start uh, checking out some things that I, I used to be more interested in, like uh, UFOs and alien exploration and, and all the mystical things of life, all the mysteries out there, everything that was uh, kind of interesting to me. Those are the kind of things that would charge me up again. And it was hard, you know. At first, you know, nothing that you ever used to do sounds like fun. Uh, you, you're just not into it. So it takes a little bit of effort to get back there. So uh, some of the things that I used to be interested in a long time ago was magic. Um, I always had a really keen interest in it. I'm not sure why. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of speculation as to why people are drawn to that. Another thing was... Uh, uh, spirituality, meditation, things that can kind of help elevate your frequency, uh, get your vibe up, so to speak. So um, what I wanted to do was explore both of those things kind of at the same time. I wanted to see how similar were they and how different were they. So I want to take a very introspective look about what these things mean to me and also maybe from an outside view of uh, how these things might compare. And here's what I discovered. So, starting on the spirituality side of things, you know, that's, uh, that can be a lot of things to a lot of people. Some people uh, can use daily meditation, some people meditate once in a while. Uh, guilty. But, uh, yeah, meditation is a thing that you kind of start off with. Maybe you feel like you're wasting time or you're being silly or you're just kind of calm yourself down and trying to have a relaxing five or ten minutes. Um, that's, that's the general pedestrian approach to these kinds of things. Uh, that's how I started off. I thought, you know, it'll be nice. Meditation really kind of does something else to you. And you'll feel it. Maybe not every time, but sometimes you will feel something change. Especially when you're done meditating and you kind of come out of it. You're, you're in this state for the rest of the day and you feel it. And it's a, it's a really interesting thing. And uh, what that is, it's vibration. It's uh, your, your frequency elevating. Now I don't mean like the, uh, like the little buzzing sensation you might feel um, from uh, driving on a on a dirt road, but uh, it's something else. It's a different different type of understanding. Um, yeah, that's spirituality. Uh, you know, it's, it involves a lot of meditation, a lot, a lot of seeking your higher self, trying to center yourself, and trying to let go of a lot of the, the things that really bring negativity into your life. How do you be, live a more positive life and, and approach things in a whole different mindset? How do you change your mental frequencies? Uh, how do you uh, stop being angry? These kinds of things. So they're very transcendental. They're very uh, personal for the most part. It's about uh, you know you know reaching inside and finding a better version of you. Magic on the other hand is a little bit different although not entirely dissimilar. The, uh, the similarities with magic and spirituality tend to be between um, mostly how you go about the meditations. Uh, it all comes down to one thing, the um, law of attraction. You might have heard of the law of attraction. It's how you uh, kind of put these energies out there into the universe and uh, the universe will bring to you these things that you want, the desires you have in your life, the, the, the state of being that you want to be experiencing, things like that. It's the law of attraction. Now, both of them, magic and spirituality, both center basically right around that. So what I've discovered with magic that's a little different is the meditation process. 
Now, you understand the word spell, like when you're casting a spell or writing a spell, all of that um, is a form of meditation. Now, it's a lot more structured than on the spirituality side. It's still a guided process. You know, a lot of times your meditations will start off, somebody guides you through a 10 or 15 minute or a half hour session of meditation. And at some point, you can do that on your own. You can create your own uh, meditations. And you kind of guide yourself through that process. And you'll sit quietly and enjoy it and have some music, incense, maybe things like that. Anything to help stimulate the senses. Um, magic does that in a very similar way. It's, uh, it's not that different from uh, someone baking cupcakes. You know, they follow the instructions in their book uh, or on a page. They add the ingredients. They do everything in the right order in the process. And they make a nice cake. Well, sometimes those cakes taste a whole lot nicer than other times. And sometimes it's because of the intent, the purpose of why the cake was being made. If it was for somebody special, that cake's going to taste great because somebody put something else in there, some energy, something of themselves, besides just the basic ingredients. A lot of people will chalk that up to just, uh, you know, coincidence or, you know, maybe it's endorphins. It just tastes better, even though it probably tastes the same as every other time they made the cake. But uh, it's not necessarily true. See, that's the kind of thing that happens when you're spell casting or you're doing magic. You are uh, writing out your spells or you're reading it off a page. Um, the one trick about the law of attraction that can go wrong a lot a lot easier with uh, the meditation version or the spirituality uh, version. You uh, you throw in any kind of negatives in your thought, like I don't want this to happen. Well, the universe doesn't really differentiate the do's and don'ts. It kind of just picks up on oh, um, flood. Ooh, you want a flood? There's a here's a flood. It provides what you ask for, not the do's or don'ts or the process. It provides the thing or the uh, mental state or something like that. So you say I don't want it to flood. And uh, the universe goes, flood, flood, and then there's a flood. That's, you know, an extreme example. But, uh, you know, with spell casting, a lot of times the spells are um, written already. You know, people will share them, they'll write their own, or they'll, they'll phrase them correctly. The word spelling comes from making spells. It's, it literally does. It's not a different use of the same word. It's, it's where that comes from. You have to write it in a certain way so that you kind of eliminate those negatives. Unless, of course, you're intending negatives, which is, don't do that. Bad magic. But, um, yeah, so you will also notice that in spells, a lot of times they'll use oils or candles or other things, other items. You know, there's herbs and plants that are a lot of times incorporated into magic. So there's, there's things and talismans. You know, these things give power. Uh, if you give power to them, they will have that, that kind of energy. It might be negligible but you know even the human brain operates off a very small amount of power but it doesn't take a lot so sometimes combining these ingredients as they do will create another type of energy it will combine those energies to create a whole new type of energy that helps expand it and it's like a, a shot of red bull for your meditation it's basically what it is um, you know, I don't want to oversimplify, of course, because they're very different. They can do different things, and I think that's where magic gets an extra point. So, back to the spirituality side. They will also use crystals. Uh, they will use plants. They will use a lot of connections to nature. It's very similar to uh, magic in that respect. The crystals do have their own energies. Now, I don't know how long ago they came up with devices that could measure the different types of frequencies and the different type of vibrations going on in all the different types of crystals, but they are all different. You know, quartz and calcite will vibrate at different frequencies. They just do. Everything does. It has its own frequency. You know, and, and um, I started learning about these things, oh gosh, probably 30 years ago. I always had an interest in it, and honestly, I don't think I really believed it at first. There was a point in time where uh, I experienced some magic, and I saw it for myself firsthand. I knew I wasn't being tricked. I worked in magic shows in Vegas. All right, I knew I knew stage magic versus the real deal, and uh, you know this is from somebody that had nothing to prove to me, but showed it to me, and 
the magic that I kind of saw happen from this person was, was really interesting. And it really did kind of defy what I thought I knew. And, uh, you know, as you learn to do these kinds of things yourself, well, you're not tricking yourself. You know, you're not doing the, a little show for yourself. So there, uh, there definitely turned out to be something to it. And at the same time, I was studying the spirituality. How do I meditate? How do I calm myself? I didn't really get that into it. Obviously, it, you know, I had a crazy life for the past 20 years. But, um, you know, I got back into it a few months ago when I heard a lot of people were having just the crappiest 2019. The whole first half of the year sucked for a lot of people. And it seems like mostly higher vibrational people were talking about that kind of thing. Lower vibrational people probably just sometimes days are bad. But, um, you know, I knew there was more to it. It's just It was uncanny how much stuff was going wrong in my life for the first half of the year. And, uh, you know, after I understood why, I was like, wow, okay, so let's look some more into this. And that's when I kind of came up with the idea to, to, to kind of delve into this a little deeper. Uh, but that's essentially magic. It's uh, it's it's like uh, how you can take two house plants. Now these studies have been done. You can see them online. Lots of people have done this. You can do it yourself. But if you take two house plants and you yell at one every day, call it horrible things, and, and then the other one you say, oh, you, you know, you're so pretty and nice and wonderful. You do that for a month. One plant that you yell at is going to wither and die. The other one's going to flourish. Same amount of sun, same location, doing the same things with it. This is vibrational frequency. This is what happens. You know, this is why words have power. They vibrate. And uh, that's the unknown part of science. That's the part of science that science can't explain. It's like, why does this happen? This, there's no reason why one plant would, would change because you're talking to it differently. Well, that doesn't really make sense in science. It's when you take the thing about science that is unknown and you combine it with science and you combine it with spirituality that's your magic that's how you get magic that's essentially what magic is and there are people that have been uh, practicing these techniques these things taking different uh, combinations of plants or uh, stones crystals plants sometimes animal life I suppose various things that resonate at certain frequencies you change those vibrations and you send those out there now you can send vibrations and everything emits from you this is how sometimes people are thinking about you and they call you because they're sensing you your vibrations go out beyond your own little magnetic field that you carry around you know you can feel it you can actually feel your own magnetic field you can feel it pushing and pulling against your own hands it, it extends out it does whatever it wants. It does whatever you want it to. If you learn to direct it, you're using magic. And it's a very natural thing. Uh, a lot of it has to do with belief. Sometimes there's a belief factor involved. Now, belief is just another way of knowing. If you know something, that establishes your belief. Say you know that your favorite sports team won six out of uh, ten games last year. Well, okay, and they're they're playing this team again, that they've, they've already beaten them six out of ten times, they're going to play them again, you believe they'll win this time. Because you know they have a, a track record of winning. Uh, you know, you don't really know the outcome of that step until it happens, of course, but uh, a lot of, of belief is knowing. So you can believe in magic because you know some things do happen. Just like you can believe in yourself because you know your capabilities. You know what you can do and you know that you can do more. And if you believe you can do more, it's because you know you can do more. Because you've done more in the past. You had a point where you didn't think you could do more and you did. So you know you can do that again. So you believe it. Belief is uh, it's a very important thing. So believing in magic, why not? Imagine you have like this much, this one foot, one more than a foot. 14 inches is uh, the light wave spectrum from one end to the other, like a ruler. Well, you only see this one tiny little half inch of the light wave spectrum, according to this chart, right? Well, we know that there's more light waves out there, right? Because you can measure them and detect them with uh, devices like infrared and x-rays. You can see 
these light wave frequencies that you can't see with the human eye. So we know there's more. We know there's even more that we can't detect because we have no devices to detect even that far out of the range. But we know they're there. So why is magic any different? Why are the, the things and the tools we use every day, the human mind, the, the, the potions or the, uh, the plants and, and minerals that we use, when we combine those into uh, a new frequency, you know, that, that range of energy is just as broad as the light wave spectrum. There's so much more to it than even you know. I mean, you know that you can take certain plants uh, have medicinal value. And uh, you can take one that will cure a headache. All right? You know, you, they refine them and make pills out of them, and they work much better. But, um, you know, a lot of times you can, you can take a plant for a certain ailment or an antibiotic or something like that. Who's to say that's the limit of its range? You can't. Yeah, same with crystals. You know, there are energy. There's energy inside crystals. You can hit two crystals together in like a dark bathroom or, or someplace where it's totally pitch black. You hit them together, they'll they'll light up. They uh, they glow inside. Um, you could do that at home. You can do it anytime you want. Hit crystals together, they will light up. They have energy inside. They use them in uh, radios, TVs, cell phones, lots of other rare earth minerals. These things have power. And who's to say the, the range is known? Because it can't be. They do other things. You know, that's why people charge crystals in moonlight and sunlight. Um, they absorb light. They really do. They, there's more to it than science is willing to explain. They can't explain beyond what they think they know. Uh, certain people do know because they can feel it. And vibration... You want to be able to elevate your vibration. You really want to be able to be up here. You really want to try harder to get out of the out of the, the low level vibration where a lot of people spend their time. And once you start feeling that change, it's not it's not something you feel like zzz, it's not like that. It's you feel it. You understand it inside, and things about your life will change. Like you won't be able to drink alcohol uh, like you used to. Uh, you might be I might have been able to drink a lot and it was great and you had fun. You know, now you're gonna find out that your your body and your physical feeling is is not right anymore because you'll just have a few shots. You're not even feeling bad. You're feeling great. You have a couple shots, you're like, Wow, I don't feel right anymore because you're lowering your vibration, things like that. And that's what happened to me. I like drinking, but I, I really can't anymore. Um not because I can't, because I do that and I don't feel like uh I don't feel like me where I am in where I am now. And it, it's really a neat experience. It's kind of nice. It's cheaper. But uh, it goes for a lot of different things. There's things you, you used to be able to do that you won't be able to do anymore because your vibration is higher. And uh, elevating your vibration is, is, is huge. It's important. And when you get there, you're going to want to keep going up because it's, uh, it's the way you're supposed to be living, I think. Raising your vibration, do meditation, work with crystals, explore magic. You know, find out what the energies are all about. Feel the energies. You'll learn to feel them. You'll learn to tell the difference between things that have uh, uh, different vibes. You'll be able to touch them and feel it. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know how to explain it, but it's one of those things that science doesn't have an explanation for. It's just spiritual. This is StarTech 47, signing out.